Um, so then there's a question of who makes the law. I've already talked about the fact that nationally you have parliaments and judges who discover the law. In respect of international law, for treaties, diplomats go to treaty negotiations. Uh, and they go there with something called full powers. So their Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade uh, or the equivalent yeah. of yep. that okay. says to their diplomat, when you go, here are your instructions for negotiating this treaty. Yep. Um, and you follow those instructions and you have authority to sign that treaty. Okay. So, so diplomats go there. Now, even if the diplomats sign at the, at the negotiating conference, they still might need authority from their parliament okay. in order to yeah. for that for that treaty to become law for that nation. So, so essentially, saying you kind of agree to the parameters of this law, but we still then have to make it law. Is that kind of the thinking right. here? Right, yeah, right. Okay. So, it's, but but there is this. Uh, intervening situation where you signed a treaty but it has not yet been ratified by your parliament in which case you're bound not to do anything inconsistent with the treaty but you're not necessarily bound by the treaty in a full sense okay all right treaty light <laughs> treaty light treaty light okay yes. all right all right um and then in terms of who makes the law for customary international law will essentially it's states, it's government officials who, government decision makers through official actions and words and often by their statements in, in official context. Okay. They, they, they make customary international law. General principles of law come from national law. Yep. And then those subsidiary sources are textbooks, manuals, journal articles, case reports, all of those sorts of things. Great. Um, then there's the subjects of different you know, national law versus international law. So on the one hand, in national law, individuals are subject of national laws okay. and corporate entities. So corporate entities are thought of as persons for the purposes of the law. Um, and also the government itself is bound by national laws. Um, but when it comes to international law, it's rarely the case that individuals and corporate entities are the subject of international law. Oh, okay, all right. It, it applies yeah. more to states. So for example, the Outer Space Treaty applies to governments, not directly to individuals or corporations. So then, then the emphasis would be the national law to enforce the individuals and corporations in upholding of the international law? That's right, okay. that's right. So then, then the government has a responsibility to implement the treaty. Yep. Um, and the, the, in addition to states, there are international organisations that have legal personality. So, for example, the European Space Agency yep. um, would have legal personality and would be bound by international law. And that's well. because it's member states upholding to a large organisation. Because right. some of those countries in ESA and the European Space Agency also have their own individual space right. agencies, right? Yes, 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 exactly.